You want to know how the narcissist becomes your spectator, how they end up watching you. By the end of this video, you're going to find out. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung. I am a narcissist negotiation expert. My background is as an attorney and on this channel and in my videos here, I teach you real tricks, actual real world news you can use on how to finally become the more powerful one with the most toxic personality on the planet. And if that's something that you want to do, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Go on, do it right now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you can finally feel like you're the one who's not like ugh, behind the eight ball. The one that feels like you've got like the, the big foot on your chest for a change. Now, let's talk about how the narcissist is finally like, watching what you're doing in, instead of like uh, you dealing with them, right? Okay, so what happens is they end up watching you and why are they watching you? Well, let's talk about that. So what happens is there is this cycle that they go through. First of all, they are checking you out to see if you are going to be a good source of supply. So they love bomb you. So they go through these various phases of a relationship. It's love bombing and then they devalue and then they discard and then they kind of hoover sometimes, but it's not always linear, right? So they love bomb and then, and then it's a value and then going back to love bomb sometimes and then to discard. And, you know, it's kind of this whole back and forth constantly, and it's not always linear, but they're constantly testing you and conditioning you to see if you are going to be sticking around. They want to see if you are going to be a good form of supply. So they find this target that they want to be the center of attention. They, they need to be the center of attention. They need this constant adulation. They need you to be paying attention to them at all times. They want to make sure that you are going to be paying attention to them. And then they start devaluing you. And that's part of the conditioning, by the way, because they want to see how you're going to behave when they're devaluing you. So they start ghosting you, they start barbing you, they start saying things and they want to see, are you going to stick around? Are they going to get, be able to get away with that? What are you going to do when they do that? And how do you behave? Are you going to go after them, beg for them? They want to know, do they have control over you? Do you beg for their approval? They want to know, are you going to beg for their approval? They want that. They want to start this cycle. And then it starts this cycle of abuse. And, and then you, by the way, you start needing that hit of dopamine because then when you get that approval from them, you get that hit of dopamine in your brain. And now you actually start becoming addicted to needing their approval. And that's how that trauma brain starts. That's how you start becoming addicted to needing them. And it, that's why it becomes so, so difficult to separate yourself from them. It's actually almost like a cult in some ways. And then they start watching you at all times, not necessarily. And it's so confusing because you confuse that with love. It's not necessarily love. It's you are their possession to them. It's you belong to them. It's an extension of them. You are their source of supply. And I have a whole lot more of this on my video called why is narcissist always watching you? And I would definitely check that out by the way, but they're always watching you. They're always monitoring your behavior and your actions. And it's super weird. And I remember when I was targeted by a couple of different covert narcissists, I remember they were constantly watching me and copying me, copying my behavior, mimicking my behavior, mirroring my behavior. And it was super weird, 
super stockish, very, very eerie and very uh, unsettling to say the least. And I remember feeling really kind of grossed out by it, but that's, you know, something that they do because they don't have a sense of self. So they're constantly watching as well. And you're never going to really know how they see you, by the way, because the view they hold of you is distorted by their own needs and their own desires. I mean, so they only want to be seen in their light and their needs and their desires. Okay. So from their perspective, you are a victim. So how do they become your spectator? Well, by you moving on, you start to move on. You start to become stronger. You start to place your boundaries. You start to hold your ground. You start to say, this is not going to be how it's going to go anymore. You start to negotiate with them from a place of strategy. You start to create leverage. You start to decide that this is not how it's going to go anymore. And you start to say, I'm going to walk away from this. And that's what I teach you in my slay strategy. That's how my entire method methodology is. Obviously, this isn't something that happens overnight. Obviously, this is something that's a little bit of a long game and you have to plan for this. I have an entire channel here on YouTube that is dedicated to this. And I have an entire program that is dedicated to this. And I have free webinars that I offer on how to start with this. And I have a free crush my negotiation prep worksheet where you can start with this, by the way, which you can grab at winmynegotiation.com, which I highly recommend that you get. It's a free worksheet. Definitely grab that. And if you are so ready to walk away, definitely put walk away in the comments like Kelly Clarkson, just walk away. Put that in the comments. And don't do it without support. I have a whole Facebook group that is dedicated to people supporting each other. So make sure that you join that. It's called Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Definitely join that. We will make sure that there's a link to that below as well. So I have so many free resources for you to get started. I have all kinds of stuff here. So for sure, when they become your spectator is when you start to walk away, when you start to create your own life, when you start to decide that this ain't how it's going to be anymore. You know, it starts with you saying, I'm not going to retreat anymore. I'm no longer going to be conditioned to be this way. You know, what happens is at the beginning, you're going to be like, ah, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm afraid of the backlash. I'm afraid of how it's going to go. I get that because that's how they've conditioned you to believe. Totally, totally understandable. So you take baby steps, you know, the first step is just to say, I'm not going to continue to retreat, but then you can say, okay, I'm not going to continue to retreat, but I can start to at least start to take baby steps forward this way and start to at least ask for what I want, start to get what I want, start to create strategy, start to create leverage, start to anticipate what they're going to do, start to focus on you, your case, your position. Guess what that spells? That spells slay. Yes, it does. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to slay your negotiation. That's what I teach you how to do. So it's time to slay. And that's what we're going to do. And you can do this. Never give in, never give up. And I will definitely see you in the next video. All right, we got this.